I'm Alice Alicia Jones, and this is another one of my Living Consciously videos. I welcome you to it on this Friday, the, th the day after Thanksgiving. It was truly an unusual Thanksgiving, uh, not at all as sad or lonely as I thought it would be, because again, every minute of our, of our day was filled up when we weren't preparing food, I was Zooming or I was emailing or I was texting and answering texts, answering emails to uh, friends, clients, family that had uh, come in from around the world. And uh, so really, um, like I said, it wasn't nearly as rough as I thought it would be and not nearly as sad as I thought it would be. I'm in a different location in my home today, and my Facebook Live uh, is against my back wall where I have four archangels behind me, and I have a picture of an archangel that was taken by two of my clients. They lived about 20 miles apart from each other, and they took it on two different occasions. They didn't take it the same day. And one was in Ashburn. One lives in Ashburn. The other one lives in uh, the Potomac Falls and just off the Algonquian River. And they uh, took the same picture, exactly the same picture. And it's a picture of Archangel Raphael with his trumpet. And then behind me is um, a picture that I uh, painted of the, uh, the lavender fields in um, Provence in France. And so I'm very, very uh, happy to have you here. But we're gonna continue with clairsentience. Clairsentience is clear sensing, but it also is known as clear feeling and clear knowing. I covered that the, the part of it already last week that is associated with doom and associated with warning, but there's a lot of other facets to clairsentience that I would like to cover today. Um, one of them is that you can take the correct temperature of a uh, person, of a place, of a thing, you can get the clear sense of whether this belonged to uh, somebody that was a kind person, a beneficial person. This is extremely helpful when purchasing antiques because effectively, think about it. You don't want to bring an antique home that may have had negative energy attached to it. And even though you might love the antique, there might be something with it that just doesn't feel right. And you will pick that up with um, your ability to sense this. The very first time that I was able to take like the, the temperature or the temperament of my surroundings was when I was in fourth grade and um, we were taught by the nuns and it just so happened that that day I was sick. So I didn't go to school at the normal time to be there. Um, I think our classes started at eight o'clock in the morning. So we were walking and it was a, a five block walk and it was a long five blocks. And this is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where there was no such thing as school buses for parochial students. There was for public students, but not for parochial students. So if your parents didn't drive you, and my parents did not own a car, um, you walked. And so I didn't start feeling uh, good until later in the morning. And I think I got there somewhere between 10 and 11, 10 and 12, 11 and 12. Um, it was certainly before lunch. And when I walked into the classroom, I watched the nun walk 
pace back and forth across the front of the room. And I took my place at the back of the room and all the students were sitting with their hands folded like this at the on their desks. No one said a word, not the nun, not the students, but I could feel the anger in that classroom. I could absolutely feel the tension that each child held. And I do not recall whether I questioned a student as to what she was angry about. I do remember her name. She was Sister Helena. Uh, I'm sure by now she has long passed, but uh, she was so angry and the students were so frightened that it truly was uh, a very sad sight. But that was, that was my first experience. Um, another uh, ex uh, thing that, that clairsentience is related to is deja vu. When you sense that you've been here before, you've absolutely know you have a flash of something go through your mind and you know that you have experienced the same place at a different time. And I had that happen to me um, very, very strongly the very first time I went to Chester, England. And um, this, as we drove into the town, it was unbelievable feeling of happiness, of joy, of radiance, of uh, just complete overwhelming satisfaction. And I was so pleased to be there. And I thought to myself, well, this is interesting. And then when I got home from the vacation and uh, went into meditation, only then in, in asking my guides, um, why I sensed this, why I felt this way. I saw a vision of me as a young woman. I was a dressmaker. And because I was a dressmaker, I also decorated hats, bonnets, because this was at a time when uh, bonnets were very, very big. So this was just such a fulfilling life for me and such a joyous life. And the irony is that when I became a young adult, because I really had um, no uh, spending money to speak of, or, or not much, I should say, um, my parents uh, never gave me an allowance. So any spending money that I wanted, I had to earn. And there was always something that I wanted to buy. So um the money never went far enough. And I can remember coming home with material that cost me maybe 50 cents or a dollar and making the cutest sundress out of it. And this would happen time and time again. So it was a long time before I realized that all the time that I spent into making my clothes if I just judiciously followed the sales, I would be by far better off. And um, that's what I have done uh, the rest of my life. I, uh, I bought a Bernina of, uh, maybe 15 years ago. And uh, no, I guess almost 20 years ago. And once it broke down, um, I got it repaired, and then the second time it broke down, I never uh, took for a repair. And I paid, I'm pretty sure, somewhere between 1400 and 1600 for that machine. And because it's computer operated, um, it, it really does have to be maintained. And I just found out my neighbor just bought another old fashioned singer, the kind that I learned on when I was a teenager. <clears throat> and she only paid $400 for it. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to give, have this fixed, either give this 
back to my daughter that uh, it was promised to, or she doesn't want it to my daughter-in-law. But when I arrived also in Florence, I had the sense that everything was familiar to me. The cobblestones, the streets, the buildings, the dog, the, uh, the, the beautiful church, um, the center squares. Everything had a feeling of familiarity. And when I, again, in meditation, um, what came to me was that I was one of the painters that studied in the garden of Lorenzo de' Medici. When we watched um, the entire series of the Medici, again, everything looked familiar. It was as if I was reliving a piece of my life. And uh, lo and behold, uh, I can remember the one time when I listened to Brian Weiss talk and I saw him on stage and saw a Florentine man, a man from Florence, standing behind him. And when I went up to him, because I had purchased two of his books and went to get his uh, to get them signed by him, I told him that I had seen a man from Florence standing behind him. And he said, Florence is my favorite city in the whole world. In fact, I'm going there tomorrow. So effectively, I just feel I'm very, very closely aligned with Florence. And so anytime that that you feel that sense of deja vu, just know that that clairsentience is basically operating in you. There's something else about clairsentience that I wanted uh, to share with you that most people, um, you may have heard of it, maybe you, you haven't, but this is where you are, can choose a role on this planet as a victim soul. And as a victim soul, you actually tap into the pain of Mother Earth. If she is going to experience an earthquake, a tsunami, a hurricane, um, forest fires, uh, the you know the the tremors of uh, the earth, a mudslide, whatever it is that is happening to her. There are people who will take on transmuting the energy or effectively they will take on transmuting the energy of what Carl Jung called the collective unconscious. That ball, that band, I should say, of consciousness that basically encircles the earth. And these people, it can be rage, it can be ignorance, it can be uh, anger, it can be, uh, you know, destructive attitudes, whatever it is. Uh, they take that through their own body and they feel that and they transmute it. And they learn how to send those energies to the light. Pretty much the way when we do Reiki on a person or when I am giving a person a healing, even whether it's long distance or in person, it has uh, no bearing whatsoever, that the energy that you feel releasing from the person you, I, I know myself, I feel it come through my hands, but I also feel it exit. And I ask that the purple transformational flame of St. Germain take this energy, take this negativity, transmute it into love, 
escort it to its next place of evolution. But a victim soul will actually take it into themselves and take it upon themselves to transmute the energy. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to share. I'm sure that m- most of you have heard the phrase, the eyes are the windows to the soul. I can remember very, very clearly because the the scene was um, rather kind of just interesting that uh, this is when I was rather young, rather brash, rather foolish, and uh, willing to take a risk. And um, the I happened to be in London with an, at the Buckingham Palace just as the Queen's tea party was letting out, the guests from the tea party. And uh, my first husband and I noticed that oh, geez, nobody was watching the gate. There wasn't a Bobby standing there as as there normally is. So we thought, never get an opportunity like this again. Let's go in. And so we walked in and circulated amongst those in their beautiful tea dresses, in their beautiful hats, spring hats. And uh, um, I guess they had on Uh, soft gray coats. I'm not sure what they're called. I know it's not called a morning coat, but uh, specifically designed for a tea party and their gray hats. And uh, it was, it was just exquisite. And I just happened to look into the eyes of one of the women that was leaving. And this was the cruelest set of eyes I have ever seen in my life. I it was hard for me to believe that they belonged to a human. Um, there was just so much cruelty in those eyes. So I, the, of course, what comes through my mind is it doesn't matter how wealthy you are, how connected you are. If, the milk of human kindness does not live inside of you. It truly doesn't matter what else you have. So I will take my leave. I will see you next week, Friday. Slowly, I'm getting my house back together. Um, Maybe by uh, the end of December, I will be able to go on a more frequent schedule of uh, these because I truly love to do them. But uh, for right now, it's going to be every Friday. And if you're looking for an outstanding Christmas present, I suggest you buy Own Your Power Day by Day. You read it to two pages a day. It's a book that will take you the whole year to get through. Phenomenal book, absolutely guided by spirit, filled with spirit's messages for every single day. And it's available through Amazon and it's available through my website, aliziajones.com. And Alicia is spelled A L I. CJA. I thank you for watching and I will see you within a week. Welcome. I'm Alice Alicia Jones.